Humanitarian agencies are warning that shortages of essential hygiene items are turning Gaza into a hotbed for disease. Hanin Harara is a journalist and a humanitarian activist in Gaza, and she joins us live now from Rafa in Gaza. Um, limited access, we know, to food, water and sanitary items. We were hearing that it's a, you know, a recipe for an outbreak of an epidemic, potentially. Can you tell us what the situation is like and how people are managing to cope in such difficult situation? OK, uh, thank you so much, Charles. Uh, before I mention to the humanitarian uh, situation here, I just want to say it is the six, nine days of the ongoing massacres and um, uh, atrocities against it's all over the Palestinian in the Gaza Strip right now. Uh, we could say the situation here, the humanitarian situation is getting worse day by day. And the women here are just cannot even overwhelm the uh, miserable conditions that they are living in. We talk about uh, the way that uh, if we could talk about the winter, as um, many people um, live in their homes uh, safely, but here the people are displacing them from their homes after evacuating to uh, live in tents with no shelters. Those tents are no longer enough to protect those people who are live in. We talk about limited and limitation of the uh, blankets, clothes for those babies and kids uh, running out of uh, clean water uh, to drink or even water to use by cleaning uh, uh, the clothes. The women here are forced to deal with that by using the rainfall sometimes to clean the uh, uh, supplies uh, in uh, tools, uh, which is uh, cooking tools or even uh, showering the uh, babies and kids or even clean the clothes. So they are witnessing um, miserable conditions. We talk about these kids with have we, uh, who have no enough clothes even from this uh, uh, um, uh, suffering because when they evacuating from their homes, they um, have no, nothing with them. So right now they forced to deal with this uh, circumstances. Now, if we co we can talk about even uh, the, the the medical care for those people, or even the um, uh, we could say the sanitary uh, um, items for uh, the women, it's uh, disappearing from the market because there is a huge limitation in uh, the sanitary uh, pads for the people who got period and even uh, something like uh, making them uh, more comfortable because there's no medicine even uh, if you talk about the herbs uh, to uh, boiling it there is no enough clean water to make it for them and even if we talk about uh, firing uh, the fire to boiling these herbs uh, it makes um, um, minimum two hours to make this cup of herbs to make the women feeling much better because of the pain of uh, uh, period. So right now, those people, those mothers and sisters are really suffering. And um, it is so sensitive to talk about because they have a dignity when they're calling for these uh, supplies and um, uh, medical care for those, but they forced to deal with, with, with this situation. The uh, fathers and the brothers are just, um, we can say, dig small holes uh, to, um, uh, to uh, we could say, to relieve uh, themselves. So imagine with me how hard it is when the mother or the sister are just, I want to get bathroom and there is no bathroom because they already live in tents. So the, fathers, the fathers, as I mentioned, are doing just small holes in front of uh, the, the tents to make the children relieve there. So we are talking about I mean, miserable conditions here and, and, and it is unhumanitarian uh, situation. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Um, thank you so much. I mean, yeah, you're painting a picture of some really, really challenging situations. I just wanted to ask you um, ab about the hospital. You're at the Kuwaiti hospital in Rafa. What's the situation like there? And, and you've been talking a lot about women. You know, what about women who might be pregnant or, you know, 
nearing the time when they need to give birth. What's the situation for them like right now? What's happening? What, what, what are they to do? Yes, well, I'm standing in front of Al Kuwaiti Hospital right now, and there is no um, capacity there. It is just uh, emergency units here, which is uh, functioning right now. So uh, we're talking about uh, the last night, even uh, Rafah uh, refugee camp, two uh, refugee camps in Rafah, which is Yabna and um, uh, what is um, Ashabura camps, uh, was targeted in several areas strikes and uh, those airstrikes bombed two residential buildings and killed uh, th three, uh, 30 uh, person here. Those person are uh, just uh, uh, coming here at Al Kuwaiti Hospital with a dozens of uh, uh, a wounded uh, person. But unfortunately, all of those uh, people uh, move from this hospital to the Euro European hospital because there is no enough capacity or no enough medical care here. Those um, uh, uh, camps uh, were just uh, 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 targeted uh, last night, uh, as I mentioned, Ashabura and Yabna. It is, uh, um, if we focus about those families, uh, it is uh, one of them was uh, Ashur and Abu Dba families. And those families, uh, unfortunately, have 120 person in, in 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 the one residential building so those people who are resident resident there was just displacing from their homes and protect in this residential buildings but unfortunately all of these people who are uh, who were there was uh, under the fire last night and under attack last night and killed uh, being killed uh, unfortunately 13 and the rest of these people got injured with no even medical supplies here at Al Kuwaiti Hospital right now. Hanin Harara from Gaza, thank you so much for joining us with those details.